Hello and welcome to Hot and Heavy, the Elaine Bennis podcast. I'm your host, Shivani Desai. Today, I'll be talking about Season 1, Episode 2, The Stakeout. Okay, I hope that sounded pretty professional. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, this is my first official episode of this podcast, and I am very new to the podcasting world. So this is like the 14th take I've done of that intro. So I'm hoping that was good enough. Thank you so much for tuning in. Do you say tuning in in podcasting? Oh my God. See, look, I'm already doubting myself. At any rate, thank you for listening. And I um, I just wanted to give a little background for those of you who might have skipped that intro episode. And let's face it, you probably did. I know I do. Whenever I listen to podcasts, I'm like, I don't need to hear an intro episode. Just get into it already. So a uh, little background. I am a writer, actor, and comedian out of Denver, Colorado. I wanted to do this podcast because, well, I was listening to this other podcast called Signcast. Fantastic show. Um, it's a rewatch podcast about Seinfeld, and uh, <laughs> obviously, hosted by two guys, Matt and Vinny. Yeah, just long story short, I just felt like while they did such a thorough and, a, and fantastic job in so many ways, I kind of hungered for a female perspective. And not only just a female perspective, but maybe a little bit more time dedicated to Elaine on the show. So I figured, hey, you know what? I can buy a microphone. And now I bought a pop filter. I just learned a pop filter is good. So psh, bought that. Yeah, so I was like, I can do this. I'm going to do this. And so yeah, I'm really excited to get started. So thank you again for for tuning in. And I really hope I make this a fantastic experience for you. So being that this is the first time we're diving into this, uh, I just wanted to give a little background for you fans out there as to how Julia Louis-Dreyfus came to be Elaine on Seinfeld. Now, the resource I'm using for this is a book called Seinfeldia by Jennifer Keishan Armstrong, which is a fantastic book. I recommend it to all you Seinfeld fans out there. And just to read the cover, it's a book about how a show about nothing changed everything. Really well-researched, just treasure trove of information about Seinfeld. And so, yeah, I'll be I'll be referencing this book quite a bit. She's done such a great job to kind of give like behind the scenes um She's interviewed a lot of people involved in the show. So I, I went to this book when I was thinking about this podcast and this episode in particular, because I wanted to give a little bit of like, OK, well, let's just talk about how Julia got on the show. So originally, they knew they wanted a female presence on the show. So in the pilot episode, if you guys remember, and now, of course, we're not covering the pilot. I'm not starting with episode one because, well, Elaine's not in it. So we're starting with episode two because this is the premiere episode uh, for Elaine. But in the pilot, there was a waitress character. And so the initial thought was that this character, the waitress, who was played by an actress uh, called Lee Garlington, she was going to be the female presence. But after that, Larry David sort of didn't like the fact that the like the strong female presence would be uh, like encumbered by being a waitress. He's like, well, then all the scenes are going to have to be in this cafe or the diner or whatever. So he wanted to kind of free that up. A little tidbit, too, in the book is that <laughs> rumor had it that Larry kind of clashed a little bit with the actress who played the waitress, Lee Garlington. Apparently, she was very opinionated and would kind of halt the scenes because she wanted to say the lines a different way or something. It was basically like, okay, lady, stay in your lane and just please say what we write. So they kind of seemed like they didn't get along. So dropping Lee wasn't the the end of the world. Anyway, the network emphatically suggested, okay, well, we need another female presence on the show once it ordered more episodes after the pilot. So some of the actresses that they brought in, better known actresses, who we now know for different shows, some of them were Patricia Heaton, who went on to uh, Everybody Loves Raymond fame, Megan Mullally, who went on to Will and Grace fame, and Rosie O'Donnell, who went on to, I don't know, dominate the daytime talk show circuit forever. Um, so they were all considered for Elaine. Larry David suggested Julia Louis-Dreyfus. He had met her back in the early 80s when they were both on Saturday Night Live together. And he sort of um, expressed how they commiserated together. They both had terrible experiences. 
Now, Larry was only there for one season. Um, Julia survived three. But uh, yeah, they both really bonded over how much they uh, did not enjoy their experience at SNL. So Larry David suggested Julia Louis-Dreyfus and loved her. Now, she had a comedy background from uh, her days at Northwestern, and she had met her now husband, Brad Hall, there, and they were part of an improv group. So comedy was definitely in her blood. Now, in the Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee episode with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, that's a great show, by the way. I highly recommend it. Jerry Seinfeld hosts it. It's on Netflix. And the episode with Julia louis they're so adorable together, you guys. It's so cute. They are so giddy the entire time just to like be spending time together. I oh, I love that episode. But anyway, in, the, in that episode, she talks about the audition and how <laughs> she walked into the room and Jerry was eating cereal. I mean, can you get more Jerry than eating cereal? And she recalls how it was just so easy. She's like, I just, the dialogue was was just not the usual set up, set up joke, set up, set up joke format of every other show at that time. So yeah, she really enjoyed the writing. You know, everything just felt really easy, as she put it. Um, There's a little excerpt from the book I'd like to read, which I think sums up really well what Elaine brings to the show. And I'm quoting here from uh, Seinfeldia. As Jerry's ex, Elaine could play up her feminine energy when she wanted to, or rib Jerry like only a former girlfriend could. As an ex instead of a current girlfriend, a compromise with the network, which would have preferred the female addition to be a potential love interest and would continue to push for romantic involvement, she and Jerry could both maintain healthy dating lives and thus dating storylines. I mean, I think that's a great way to sum it up. I think that's a fantastic way to say we don't want this female character to be tied to a male character on the show. Which is, you know, I don't think I knew it at the time because I was so young when I started watching Seinfeld. But I think that's something I really responded to. It was very rare to see a female character in a network show that wasn't the mother figure or the wife or, you know, the love interest or, you know, there was it was always a lot of times a character for a female was defined by how they related to a male on the show. And a male who was probably paid more and higher billing for the show, the star of the show, if you will. So to me, I I don't think at the time I knew that part of it or that aspect of it, but I certainly responded to it. And to this day, it's one of the things I definitely appreciate the most about the Elaine Bennis character. All right. So back to the episode. I'll be watching every episode on DVD. So I own the box set, which I believe came out in like 2003 or four or something like that. And with the DVDs, I can take advantage of the extras. So if for an episode there's commentary, um, there's a feature called Inside Looks where they kind of you know do some extra interviews with the actors or writers of the episode. And then there's also a feature called Notes About Nothing, which is very reminiscent of like your VH1 pop-up video. Yes, I'm dating myself, but I don't care. The Notes About Nothing is like these little you know tidbits will come up as the episode is going on. So I just felt I'll get more information by watching the DVD. So that's how I'm going to be watching it. And with that box set, This really handy dandy book was included and it's called The Coffee Table Book for obvious reasons. So I'll be reading the synopses, synopses, I think that's it, um, of each episode from this coffee table book. So for the stakeout, the synopsis is, while accompanying Elaine to a birthday party, Jerry meets an attractive woman who leaves before he can learn anything except where she works. Afraid to risk damaging his platonic relationship with Elaine, Jerry stakes out the mystery woman's office with George so that he can casually bump into her. Now, this is the first episode that Elaine appears in, but it wasn't the first one that uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus filmed. The first episode she filmed was Male Unbonding, but they felt that the this episode, the stakeout, sort of introduced the Elaine character much more thoroughly. So, and I agree with that. I think it's a better introduction to Elaine. So let's get into it, you guys. All right. So the first scene of the episode is in the video store. Now, the DVD commentary is done by Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, and 
they really remarked about how there's so much setup in this scene. And I think what they mean, of course, it's setting up what the episode is about. But there's a lot of exposition about who Elaine is and who Elaine is to Jerry. And just as someone who's delved in writing shows and writing sketches and stuff like that and has done some improv comedy... Exposition is tricky. It's not very easy to get very necessary information out in a natural way. I think every every show goes through this in the beginning. You don't really walk around going like, hey, you're my dad. And hey, son, you know, like it's it's hard to naturally get that stuff out there, but it's necessary to communicate who people are to each other in a show. So I think they did a great job in this um, scene doing that. Just something as simple as Elaine saying, oh, yeah, you met her when we used to go out. So just in that line, you you figure out, OK, well, they're exes. Larry and Jerry mentioned in the commentary that, yeah, they, they put that there because they right away wanted to get it out that there's no will there, won't they, with them, their exes. Let's just get that out there right away. They didn't want that whole potential romantic interest uh, in the storyline at all. The one thing I noticed is that Jerry and Julia have really great chemistry immediately. I, I think I mean, it's so believable to me. And something that Julia Louis-Dreyfus says in the Inside Looks um, interview, she says that she just... The fact that she was wearing jeans and casually looking around a video store just was so easy. And I don't know, it just kind of goes back to what she said about the audition, the, the ease of it all. So the purpose of the scene is to establish Jerry and Elaine's relationship and kind of their, their deal, exchanging a party for a wedding, which, by the way, I totally agree with Elaine. Have you lost it, man? I mean, come on, a wedding? That's way bigger of an ask than a casual dinner. So I'm totally with Elaine on this point. So overall, I mean, I, I think it's a it's a good scene. You know, they had to get a lot of information out there, but it's fine. Really grounded, realistic situation, looking for a video. Well, I guess not so much anymore. But, um, you know, honest performances. Like I said, I love the chemistry. It's palpable right away. And uh, yeah, I think that it was a good, good start, good setup to not only the episode, but to Jerry and Elaine's relationship. Moving on to the birthday party scene. So this whole premise was based on a real life situation with Larry David. So he was at a party and uh, with an ex-girlfriend and met a woman who he really was interested in. Didn't get any information except for her place of work. And he happened to know where that was. And yeah, I mean, exactly what happens in this episode. He ends up staking it out. I don't know if he mentions if he actually went on a date with her. But so this ex exact situation happened. His ex was a woman named Monica Yates. And according to Seinfeldia, Yates and Larry David dated for three months in the summer of 1983. And then they seamlessly transition to being friends. So very much what Jerry and Elaine are, are doing as well. And it's believed that Elaine is based on Monica Yates. I think certainly in the beginning, it was written at, like maybe through Monica's voice, but JLD definitely brought her own magic to you know shape the character over time. So it was probably a little bit of uh, a mix by the end. But um, yeah, Monica Yates seems to have been the inspiration for this relationship of Jerry and Elaine. You know, the whole purpose of this scene is Jerry feeling very trapped with Elaine looking over his shoulder when he's instantly, I mean, you can see it right away. He's instantly attracted to this other woman. And the voiceover device that they use, it's funny, Larry David kind of mentions it in the commentary and you can, I don't know, he doesn't say this, but it seems like oh, he wasn't a fan of having to do that. But there, I mean, there's literally no other way to communicate what Jerry was thinking. And I mean, I think it was definitely necessary. I didn't have a problem with it. But yeah, I think the the way it's played, again, really great chemistry with the mystery woman. I thought I liked the kind of back and forth right away. She kind of teases him about the jacket. And it's, it's a really cool kind of back and forth between the two of them. And then that very last kind of turn back to Elaine after the mystery woman leaves. I love the... Elaine expression just glaring at him and then the little the little attitude smile just perfect moving on to the scene in the cab Larry David mentions I loved this he said he remembers watching that scene and and thinking to himself gosh we are so lucky to have her on our show which I just thought that was a you know nice little sweet thought I love this scene you know when you think about Seinfeld I mean this is 
this is like sort of the, probably one of the most serious scenes. And it's just the mark of it being such an early episode. Um, and the tone was so different, certainly in season one. I mean, can you imagine season nine, Jerry and Elaine having this conversation? I mean, they would never have this conversation. But I really liked how you could see Elaine struggling between being mad. She's mad. She's annoyed at Jerry. But then also with the with the line of so nothing after you know she blows up at him about misremembering the dream. And then you can see that hesitation of realizing, OK, I, pro- I, I know technically I, sh- I have no right to feel this way, but I do feel this way. So I'm going to take it out on him. And I don't know. I can relate to that. Um, I'm not proud of it, but I can relate to it where you know, in your head, you know, it's not logical, but it, it doesn't matter. The emotions are coming out. You you can't stop it. It's just going to happen. And I did want to mention, I feel like, you know, when I first watched this, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so jealous. Like I kept thinking, well, she's clearly jealous. But now when I think about it, I'm not, I'm not convinced she's jealous. I just think she's annoyed at the situation. And she sort of mentions it in the last scene and I'll talk about it at that point. But I'd love to hear what other people think. Is she really jealous here or is she just annoyed that he would have, you know, he'd be brazen enough to kind of flirt with a woman in front of her um, after they've broken up? So... I think the obvious way to think about it is that she's jealous, but I don't know. I think the more I think about it is like, I don't want to be with him, but I'm just annoyed that I witnessed a flirt that he was so interested, so obviously interested in another woman. So for the most part, I'm definitely going to be focusing on scenes that Elaine appears in. But part of the show also that I think is important is just giving some commentary on all the female characters in an episode. So for this one, um, the other woman in this episode is the um, the mystery woman who we find out is named Vanessa. So I will talk a little bit about the stakeout scene, even though Elaine's not in it. A really fun fact I thought was uh, Jerry Seinfeld mentioned this in the commentary The president of NBC at the time, his name was uh, Brandon Tartikoff, he kept this scene, this stakeout scene where, you know, George and and, and Jerry are plotting, you know, and and, uh, figuring out what they're going to say to um, the woman once they see her and everything. He had this scene queued up in his office to show folks how funny the show was. Like this was his example of look at this Seinfeld show. It's it's this is how brilliant it is. And Jerry is also quick to say, well, this was after he passed on the show. So I don't really know what's going on there. But (laughs) and you can see why. I mean, this is really quintessential Seinfeld writing and this whole scene. And uh, I I can definitely see why it was used as the example of how different and brilliant the show was. Back to focusing on the females in the show. So Vanessa is played by an actress named Lynn Clark. A little background on her. She definitely made her rounds on many sitcoms and soap operas in the 80s and the 90s. She didn't really continue her acting career, I should say, TV or film acting career after the year 2000. I like her. I like her energy. She's she's very similar to Elaine. I think it's great casting. She's smart. She sort of teases Jerry, like I said, about his jacket. She calls George on the whole. (laughs) I thought engineers do that with uh, design when he says he designs railroads. Really good chemistry with Jerry. I liked that, you know, it was a mutual admiration. And uh, I thought I thought she did a great job and really, really fun and good, good chemistry. All right, so we're going to take a little break. I, I cannot believe I'm even saying this, but I was contacted by a company who they wanted to do an ad on the show. I know I, I barely even publicize this show at all. But you know what? Who am I to say no to an advertisement on my podcast? So yeah, we'll take a short break and uh, I'll see you on the other side. You want your shoulders to stand out. Am I right, ladies? Well, if you suffer from narrow, rounded, or sloping shoulders, all your problems will disappear when you use chic shoulder pads. In a variety of shapes and sizes, Chic Shoulder Pads has the exact match for what you want out of your shoulders. From natural to linebacker, our shoulder pads will make your humorous say, what? And your scapula say, okay. Stop being embarrassed by your shoulders that don't command the room when you walk in. For a limited time, you will get a free sample of the Today Sponge with any Chic Shoulder Pad purchase. Available at Love's Discount Health and Beauty Aids next to Joe's Fruit Stand. Try Chic Shoulder Pads today 
and let your shoulders do the talking. Welcome back. Now we're going on to the Scrabble scene. Again, not a scene with Elaine in it, but Elaine is mentioned. I wanted to go over this scene quickly because I, well, for a couple of reasons. Jerry and Larry could not get over how slowly paced, well, the whole episode, but particularly this scene. And and you can tell they're like annoyed by it. They couldn't believe that they had let this sort of air with such a slow pace. And you can't disagree with it. I mean, it's just how these earlier episodes are. And look, my take on that is I forgive it because the writing is so strong. I mean, I would rather watch a slow paced, well written show versus something faster paced with really shitty writing. So I forgive it. I get why people can't watch these early episodes because they're so slow and the tone is so different. But I don't know. I forgive it. In this scene, we we learn that Elaine has called and in her message, she includes that uh, she knows that Jerry met with an art vandalay, which obviously means she's well aware of this little stakeout operation that he did. Okay. Was this immature on Elaine's part? Passive aggressive? Yes to both. I don't know. I could see myself doing it, though. I I think it's such a great way. You know, she was so upset that night of the party. She clearly left that in the message and let him stew in some some like turmoil, you know, personal turmoil until he sees her the next day. So was it the most mature thing? No, but I support you, Elaine. I'm, I'm with you on that. The whole scene's slow, but it's well written, well acted. So finally, the pre-wedding scene. Okay, I have to say, this is this is my favorite scene of the episode. I love the awkwardness with a little mock introduction that they do with each other. One thing that I have always kind of wondered, but it's never really defined, is how long did Jerry and Elaine go out? I mean, what was their, like, how, you know, I, I wish we sort of had known that. But um, one thing that Jerry and Larry did say in the commentary about this particular episode was that they had broken up pretty recently prior to this whole stakeout situation. So that's why everything's so uncomfortable, so awkward. So, I mean, we learn a little bit about that. Of course, as a fan, I'd like to know, like, well, what does recent mean? Like a month or a week? Like, but anyway, we don't get that. But um, yeah, it was just one of those things I always wondered. It's like, well, how long did Jerry and Elaine date for? But we'll never know. One of the great things about this scene is you get a glimpse of Julia Louis-Dreyfus's fantastic physicality. It's one of my favorite things about her as an actress, just throughout all of her roles on on television. She has always brought hilarious comedic um, physicality to every, every performance. And so this is a super small glimpse when she does her little, what Larry David calls her little roller coaster move when she says other people. And it's adorable and I love it. So we get a little bit of a glimpse of that, but we all know we will see much more physicality from Elaine as time goes on. And it's one of my favorite things, like I said, one of my favorite things about watching Julie Louis-Dreyfus and her genius. And yeah, we get a little bit of a flip here when she mentions her Wall Street boyfriend and definitely bothers Jerry when she mentions he's hilarious. And, uh, you know, that was clearly on purpose. I definitely noticed a flirty energy, though, but between the two of them. And yeah, I mean, there's great chemistry. But like in this particular scene, I don't know, I felt this flirtiness still between them. And I was wondering, gosh, was that just they wanted to establish whatever a great chemistry or was it? to kind of keep a door open for future romance because it was for the first two seasons NBC was pushing for that Jerry and Elaine you know rekindling their relationship two seasons and now I have a controversial take you guys I'm sorry but I'm just gonna put this out there is Elaine saying she's seeing someone just to get a reaction out of Jerry I mean I really don't think so but just given now she knows how she feels about seeing Jerry flirt with the woman. Quite the spectacle, as she says. This is just me being a little bit cynical. It's like, hmm, is she really seeing some Wall Street guy? Or is she just like, I want to see how Jerry's going to react. That might be a little bit uh, controversial, like I said, but it was just a thought, something, something to chew on for you guys out there. <laughs> or just completely unnecessary. Whatever. I, I, I'm fine with that as well. 
So I liked that, you know, by the end of the episode, we see that, uh, look, they've established they need to be able to talk about other people if they're going to maintain this friendship. And they're both on the same page at the end. And it's, a, it's kind of a relief. You can feel the relief uh, from both of them by the end of the show. Okay, now I want to move on to a segment of the show I am calling Contributor Corner. Now, in that introduction episode that you did not listen to, uh, I mentioned that I've recruited some hardcore fans who happen to be some good friends of mine to send their thoughts in about whatever episode I'm covering. And uh, yeah, so we can get some different perspectives about Elaine, Elaine's storyline, whatever whatever we're talking about. So um, I've kept it open. Whatever they have thoughts on, I want to hear them so that I can include them if, um, well, if they're good, right? I mean, I'm not going to include them if <laughs> they're really stupid. Uh, JK. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you would like to participate and be made fun of just like I did, um, please email me at elainepodcast at gmail.com. That's Elaine, E-L-A-I-N-E, podcast at gmail.com. All right, so today we have a clip from Sarah Constantakis. Sarah and I met a few years back, back when we were doing improv in Detroit. So a little background about Sarah and her relationship to Seinfeld. She uh, she says she's been a fan for over 20 years and has watched every season multiple times. I think a lot of us can relate to that. And uh, the things she loves about Elaine, she and I'm going to quote here from something that Sarah wrote uh, about her, her love for Elaine Bennis. She says she loves the way that Elaine both amplifies the strengths and exploits the weaknesses of the three main male characters. Yes, absolutely. She <laughs> she knows what exactly to say to each of them and where she can really kind of really dig in and uh, get under their skin. And I love that, too. Um, Sarah also loves the balance of bravado and vulnerability with Elaine. And finally, she just loves her delivery. Yes, Sarah, I'm so on the same page as you. Here is what Sarah thought of the stakeout. This is Sarah Constantakis commenting on episode two, The Stakeout. So in the intro episode, you talked about how Elaine was a character on her own with her own storyline that had nothing to do with the male characters. And I think that's why when I rewatched the very early episodes like The Stakeout, which take place after Elaine and Jerry had just broken up, I cringe over how Elaine is written a little one-dimensionally as a jealous ex-girlfriend. Throughout this episode, we see Jerry handling her with kid gloves and worrying about upsetting her, and it just bugs me how Elaine's character is defined so much in relationship to Jerry in the early episodes, because later we see how Elaine's best character traits are developed independently of her relationship with Jerry. I so enjoy watching Elaine come into her own as her own character and getting more and more acerbic and even jaded as she goes through different relationships and career moves. And that's the Elaine I love and admire. So when I watch these early episodes where she's still fawning over Jerry and having her feelings hurt by him, like in the dinner party scene in the stakeout when he's ignoring her and talking to another woman, it just rubs me the wrong way because I feel like that's not the real Elaine. Thank you so much to Sarah for that clip. It really got me thinking about the way I was watching this episode, you know, with the thoughts of doing this podcast. And I guess I was looking at it through, hmm, how do I put this? I was looking at it in the bubble of where they were at that moment. And what I mean by that is I was trying not to think ahead of what Elaine becomes. I think that I was trying to concentrate on where they were, where their mindset was at that time while writing this episode and what Julia Louis-Dreyfus did to bring that to life as much as she could. But that being said, it is really hard to watch these early episodes without thinking about the fleshed out Elaine character that evolved from both, I think, the writers finding their footing with the tone uh, and um, what they wanted out of the Elaine character and Julia Louis-Dreyfus's 
amazing capabilities. I think it was like a symbiotic relationship to uh, bring that together and and create the Elaine that we all know and love. But yeah, certainly she's <laughs> a little bit unrecognizable in this episode. But that's why it's so fascinating to really start at the beginning and see that evolution. You know, this is a very kind of cautious start. And the start is her getting upset with Jerry over another woman. Now, speaking of her relationship with Jerry, Sarah mentions the whole jealousy portion of the storyline. Now, earlier I had brought up, is this really jealousy or is it just a reaction to the lack of etiquette that Jerry showed at the party? And I kind of stand by my thought about it being more a reaction to Jerry's lack of etiquette you know, or a breach of etiquette, I guess I should say, where it's like, hey, man, we just broke up. Like, why are you flirting already in front of me? I think it's more about that versus pure jealousy. I'm open to there being some jealousy mixed in, but that also suggests that she's jealous because she wants Jerry back. And I don't, I don't subscribe to that at all. I don't think that's the case, but I think, yeah, to me, it's it's a it's a combination of jealousy and mostly like, hey, come on, we just broke up. Can you not flirt in front of me? Thanks again to Sarah Constantakis for sending in that wonderful clip. I appreciate it. And I loved the thoughts that it brought out. So some final thoughts. Um, look, it's an early episode. It's the second episode of season one. And uh it's not nearly one of my favorites, but, you know, I have to look at it from the lens of, OK, this was before they really figured out the rhythm and figured out the tone. And and if you know anything about Jerry and Larry, they were they were not television writers, so they were sort of learning as they went, too. So I, I look at it through that lens and through that lens, I say it's a good episode because I think the writing is very strong. Yeah, it's it's clunky, it's trepidatious, it's not very confident, but you know what? It, it's you can see you can see where they're going, and I I definitely um, appreciate that. Actually, this episode was nominated for a Writers Guild Award, so I think I'm I'm kind of on the same page as the Guild, uh, where <laughs> I think of the writing as you know I I hold it in high esteem, and so did they. So I'm in good company. At the end of the episode, Jerry and Larry on the commentary, they they were like, God, that, that was like a school play. Like they it was it was really funny to hear them do the the uh, commentary, I have to say, because clearly they hadn't watched that episode probably since it aired. And they didn't say this, but it, it definitely seemed like they were kind of horrified by it. I think because they know what what the show grew to be for them to see what it was, was certainly like. My God, I cannot. We are so lucky that someone saw the potential in this because, my God, look, that episode. So I thought that was really charming, actually, in the way they were, you know, I don't know. Again, they didn't say it out loud, but I feel like they they were a little bit embarrassed by by the whole uh, look of it and uh, tone of it and certainly by the pace of it. Okay, my thoughts on JLD. So every episode, I'm just going to give like some final thoughts about our beloved Elaine. Her performance was perfect. I mean, really, it really was. She didn't get the chance to really flex a lot of comedic muscle here. But what for what the episode needed from her, she served it up fantastically well. So as I watch things, I kind of study them and learn about writing structure. And, you know, as I'm trying to kind of delve into my own writing, I look for things you see a lot. And this episode did a good job of dipping its toe in this whole annoyed woman trope but then kind of, but then like taking that toe out real quick and what i mean by that is i feel like it's been done a billion times where the man of the show is the bumbling idiot and then the woman is the more mature straight laced you know the straight man i guess you could say always getting annoyed with the man and kind of thing and it's like to me it's tired it's been done and in this episode, I saw kind of, I was like, oh, man, I didn't really think about that. But it's very brief. But I think they did a good job of, again, like kind of they dipped their toe in that, but then they took it out when at the end they 
you know, she sort of admits like, hey, you know, I've never seen you flirt before. And it was quite a spectacle. She was very open about it. And they both talk about it. And I, for me, it was a little bit of a, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a stereotypical trope that I don't like. And then, no, they, they kind of save themselves out of it, which I really appreciated. And Julia Louis-Dreyfus doesn't play it in a stereotypical way. You see, again, you see the struggle that she's having with how she's feeling and and her doubt of maybe she shouldn't be feeling that way. So I, I, I kind of saw all of that in the short amount of time that she's in the episode. But I also really appreciated how relatable I think the situation is as well. So that's the stakeout, guys. I'm, you know, said all I can say about this episode. And I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to kind of evolving as this podcast goes on. You know, just just like the early episodes of Seinfeld, I, I feel like, I don't know, I might start out a little clunky, not so confident, but... I know I'm going to find my footing and find my rhythm as time goes on. And I hope you stick with me through it all. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you next time.